Wait, what? I can do that? This is Eric Bell with Wait, What? Financial matters that matter for business and the people that own them. Today, I'm fortunate to have Michael Acasio with me. He's president and CEO of the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County. For those of you who don't know what the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County is, it's one of seven statewide quasi-public private nonprofit economic development organizations residing under the California Infrastructure and Economic Development Bank, or iBank, located within the governor's office of the Business and Economic Development Corporation. Mike also serves as president of the Association of Financial Development Corporations, the statewide industry trade association representing the development corporations. Mike is a past chapter president of Inland Empire Risk Management Association and past board director for the statewide California Small Business Association and is a former commissioner with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department Commission on Recruitment, Retention, and Diversity. Mike, glad to have you on board. Thanks. Eric, glad to be here. Thanks. That was a mouthful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got quite a bit of a resume. Yeah, I want to just kind of jump into some questions because our listeners are kind of give us the information and keep going. I had a question here and I wanted to get educated myself. Who is the California Infrastructure and Economic Development Bank or iBank and this GoBiz agency? What do they do? So I guess in a nutshell, it's probably, I like to say, one of the better kept secrets in within state government. iBank, or the California Infrastructure and Economic Development Bank, was created by the California State Legislature back in 1994, basically to finance public infrastructure projects and private development. They essentially have broad authority to issue tax exempt and taxable revenue bonds, but mostly their function is provide public financing to public agencies or provide some sort of credit enhancement for building um, fire stations, police stations, uh, that sort of thing, public facilities. But they have some core programs that they operate internally. There's four of them. One is the Infrastructure State Revolving Fund. And then there's the California Lending for Energy and Environment. It's called CLEAN program. And then they have the Small Finance Center, Small Business Finance Center, which we are part of. And they provide uh, also bond financing. So uh, we're located within iBank, as you pointed out, we're one of seven development agencies in the state, throughout the state, that uh, reside under the iBank. But the parent organization within state government, which iBank's a part of, is called GoBiz, or the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. Basically, GoBiz is the lead agency. They do the California Competes credits. They have uh, business investment services called CalBiz. They provide external and legal affairs and permit assistance. And iBank's a part of that agency. That's probably it in a nutshell to describe where we're from. If I heard you right, Mike, you said your your group is part of the Small Business Finance Center. Could you tell me more about what the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County does in terms of their services they provide? And I want to ask you, too, in that same sentence, our same question, are you limited to Orange County or can you do throughout the state of California, L.A., Inland Empire, any part of California? The short answer is we have statewide authority, so we can operate anywhere, any county, anywhere in the state of California, but we're limited to California. So that's your focus, California. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. Correct. We use public funds for that purpose. The agency itself, Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County, which is based in Santa Ana, California, um, was organized in 2001. And basically, we're one of the seven that operate the state's capital access programs, the ones that I just mentioned, the infrastructure, state revolving fund, uh, clean energy, those sort of things. But within iBank, they have dedicated capital access programs, core programs providing credit or loan guarantees to small businesses by virtue of bank financing. So that's our core program. You know, Mike, what's the range of loans or credit lines that you can give? Is there a, a range that you can give? Is there a low and a high? There is. Essentially, we don't provide the direct funding, although we have programs to fund loans directly, but rather we provide credit guarantees. So we utilize public funds to leverage the guarantees. And the financing could be, it depends, we have to have a lender, whether it be a bank, a credit union, a non-bank lending entity. We could provide loan guarantees to basically shore up the loan requests or line of credit, let's say, um, a small business owner was seeking. 
but the minimum is probably 5,000 up to 20 million. Um, the guarantees itself cap out at a million. And in some instances, it's two and a half million, depending on the project viability, job creation, job retention, or public benefit that the project might provide. Wow. So this is one of the ways that the state of California is trying to retain businesses here and also help those businesses grow from an employee standpoint. Precisely. In fact, we are the boots on the ground, if you will, for the state. And we don't want small business owners being caught up in the minutia of obtaining permits, obtaining financing, and moving into other states to do business. So we want to retain the business here. That's why the core mission of the program is job creation, job retention, creation of a public tax base or public benefit. You know, so if I'm a small business or let's say medium-sized business owner in need of capital financing, should I approach my bank and then come back to you guys or a credit union or maybe one of these fintech lenders? Great question. In short, my personal opinion is if you're a small business owner and you're seeking financing, I would work through an intermediary such as us. And the reason is we have all of the contacts in terms of banks and credit unions and non-bank lenders such as fintech lenders, and we know the appetite of each of those type of lending institutions. Generally with us, we would prepare your loan requests because we know what the bank seeks, and then we'd bring it to the lender versus having you walk directly into a bank because the bank doesn't know you. Banking institutions in short, are basically heavily regulated, extremely regulated. So they have to know their customer. They go through a lot of gyrations to do that. If you're screened and we bring you into the bank, you sort of, um, we pave the way for you and we know what the bank is looking for. So you would increase your chances of obtaining funding exponentially by utilizing a program such as the state program. So you said they're heavily regulated, but it sounds like they're relationship driven too. And you guys have the relationships with them to find the right bank for that particular industry or client or whatever they're looking for. That is absolutely correct. In fact, this program, Eric, has been around since 1962. We use public funds to leverage loan guarantees. It started out $40 million. We probably have $100 million in that fund. We have plenty of capacity to provide credit guarantees as long as you're creating jobs and retaining employment. That's the key. Well, let me ask you this. If I have a low or not so good FICO score, how does that play into this equation? Also a good question. I wouldn't be totally discouraged by having a low FICO score. I mean, everyone has a story. It depends. Generally, a bank would probably look at or require a FICO score somewhere north of 700. But we've seen instances where folks maybe have had personal catastrophe in their life and had filed bankruptcy, or maybe they just have a lower credit score, something that's driving it. But it's redeemable, and it's not a bar from obtaining financing, not necessarily. Okay. So what specifically does the SBDC of Orange County look at when determining whether to approve a request for a loan guarantee? Essentially, we rely on the three key factors, which we call the three Cs, credit, character and collateral of the requests, but also the experience of the borrower and the capacity, the ability to take on more debt, and then contribution, how much of their own money they're putting into the project. Maybe maybe they're buying a business or maybe they've already financed the business and they need more working capital. So how much of their own capital is at risk in the project? And that makes a difference to a lender. So we've been talking about loans, but Can you also support lines of credit or is it lines of credit and loans or is it just loans or how does that work? Our assistance stretches help both to loans and lines of credit. There's no problem. As I said, the guarantees go up to a million, in some instances, two and a half million dollars. And the loans could be up to 20 million Um, and it could be used for almost any business purpose. So working capital, anything. Working capital, tenant improvements, business acquisitions, invoice financing. Equipment, the whole deal. Equipment. So what are the typical terms? Is it on on a loan or a line of credit? So generally the lender drives that question. If it's a loan, it could be anywhere from one year to 20 years. And perhaps on lines of credit, maybe a year up to seven years, depending. Our credit guarantee facility also goes up to seven years. So a lender would be able to obtain a multi-year commitment from us to support a line of credit or a term loan. You know, we had another guest on here who was talking about corporate credit. And I was just wondering, with your lenders, are these the larger banks, the Chases, the B of A's, the Wells, or are they more the smaller community business banks that understand business owners? In California, there are a couple of 
what I call money center banks that utilize the program. Your city national banks, for example. But the reality is the small, the medium size regional banks utilize the program. Okay, regional banks. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I was wondering, do I, if I were to get a loan with you guys, what kind of collateral do I need to put up? Do I need to put up my house or, you know, what if I don't own a home? Great question. A lender would be looking for you to have, if you own anything, they'll ask you to pledge it, basically, even if there was no equity in a home, for example. But if you didn't own a home, that's not a bar from obtaining financing. We help a lot of businesses where owners haven't purchased a home. I mean, look at the the home prices here in California. It's pretty difficult in terms of home ownership. So we recognize that fact. But generally, a small business owner has all of their capital tied up into this business venture because that's their livelihood. Right. So we recognize that. So existing business, Mike, I want to purchase it. How does that work in terms of, you know, I'm buying it because I want to expand it. So how would that work? So if you were interested in a business acquisition, a lender's approach would be, first of all, to review the business that you're buying. So you're purchasing a gas station. So they're going to ask for financial statements from the seller. They want to see what the income of the project is. Then they want to make sure that you have experience in a similar or like business. You have management ability to operate that company. If a business is not showing any profit, it's hard to make a case to a lender that the project is viable. You also have to take a salary from the company, and the banks look at that very closely as well. But the key, I think, is your capital contribution that a bank would look for, how much capital you have at risk, anywhere from they want 20 to 30% into the project, and then the bank would finance the difference. And again, the collateral question is they'll take the, the business assets as collateral, but if you own a home, they might ask you to pledge it. So be prepared for that. So you mentioned gas stations. Um, Would you recommend this is a good way to to purchase franchise opportunities or what's your thought on franchises? It's actually an excellent opportunity, franchises, and I'll tell you why. First of all, they're proven. Secondly, they're structured and they only sell franchises because they know that they make a profit, they make money. And it gives the bank a comfort level, even though it might be a startup, for example, that there's some continuity of management. And there's someone actually overseeing the business. If you own the 7-Eleven, for example, it's basically closely managed by the They have a process in place. Yeah, they got a process in place on what you should and shouldn't do, I guess, huh? Yes. Yeah. So they know how much it takes to make a profit, what your bottom line is, what your margins should be. Um, it gives the bank a comfort level. And, and not only that, they'll send you, if, depending on the franchise, you'll have to go through some sort of training program that they provide. And again, it provides that comfort level for a bank to take a chance, okay. even on a startup basis. So now that was an easy one, but what's the toughest industry to probably obtain financing through or for? Probably, unquestionably, would be restaurants. It's a service-oriented business. It really depends on the public and their palate and also their ability to spend money. Do they have disposable income to eat at a restaurant? So it's got to, and then it can locations very very important. But the reality is probably eight out of 10 will fail in their first year easily. So the bank wants you to be heavily invested in the restaurant. That means your own capital, probably collateral. And I think what will make a world of difference is your experience in that industry. Have you been successful? Have you done this venture before? What's your business plan like? And again, location. It's all based on location as well. So, but if it's a franchise restaurant like a McDonald's or a Wingstop, that's that's a good forward move because they got their process and they got a name recognition, so forth and so on, right? Before their franchiser opens up, allows to open up a franchisee, they've done their homework. They, because they obviously have multiple franchises, so they know what it takes to operate that franchise. So they know the number of people in that vicinity what they like, comparable services in that area. It's well honed before they allow a franchisee to open up a franchise. And they have the successful formula, generally speaking. We've been talking about profitable organizations. What about nonprofit organizations? Can you can you loan money or give them lines of credit? We can do both, actually. In fact, our agency is the largest guarantor of guarantees for nonprofits in the state. So we do a lot of nonprofit lending. The rub with nonprofits, if you will, and we're a nonprofit ourselves. We're a 501c3. We understand nonprofits. 
The reality is institutional lenders don't embrace them enough because they don't understand nonprofits. And that's why they have nonprofit status because they don't show a profit. That's the ability. And the bank is looking for profits to repay a loan. If you understand that market niche, you can be successful. We have a direct loan fund dedicated to nonprofits as okay. well. Wow, that's good. Now, the big and growing industry in California is the marijuana industry. I know federally it's not, the banks can't touch it, the big banks can't, but I'm wondering, can you guys do something in California with the marijuana industry? Well, I'll say this. I mean, in other states, it's a very successful venture. The state government is not afraid of the cannabis industry, to be honest, but the reality is, the way it's viewed, it's a Schedule One drug, So, which makes it illegal in terms of federal law. It violates federal law, it won't work for the state of California. However, vaping industry, hemp industry, which is growing, it's very popular. Those industries work. Cannabis, CBD oils, that sort of thing, ineligible under California's guarantee programs. You know, Mike, I want to ask you a little bit more about the process. Someone's interested in getting a loan through you. What would be the next step in terms of they contact you and then they you gather information or how does that work? Our website is www.sbfdoc.org or our direct Telephone line is 714-571-1900. Anything that I didn't ask you, Mike, that we should know about the Small Business Development Corporation, Orange County? I know you got a tremendous staff there. I've worked with them. You've done a lot of good things for some of my clients. Keep in mind, there's only seven of us in the entire state. Right. And California is a huge state. So I'm almost embarrassed to mention the fact that we really don't do any advertising. It's more word of mouth and through a bank. If you went to a bank lender, they would say, well, we're going to talk to the state and see if we can help you. So don't be afraid to call us if you have any ideas and you want to bounce something off of us in terms of a business opportunity. Work through our programs. I think you'll find the process a lot smoother. So, Eric, the mission of our agency is important because our programs target women. They target minority-owned companies. They target companies in project areas, what we call enterprise zones or opportunity zones, and communities of greater need. Thank you for being with us today. You can always contact Mike at the contact information he just gave, or you can always contact me at eb at wait-what.biz. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Eric. Glad to be here. In our next episode, we will be speaking to Abdi Ahmed regarding cybersecurity and your business. 